Good afternoon everyone, I hope you've had a good week. Uh, unfortunately I haven't, I went and hurt my ankle the other day. Nothing too bad, just a, a little bit of a tweak. Just means that I've not managed to really do any decent riding this week. So I'm going to take the opportunity to just talk about a few things that I've wanted to for a while. Get some things off my chest and yeah, hopefully you guys will get something from it and don't get bored by it. Basically the few things I want to talk about and it's not really a call out to anyone is I'm just gonna talk about a few opinions of mine and they're exactly that they are opinions yours may differ but to me they're quite important one of the first things I'm going to talk about is the unwritten rules in riding now they are exactly that they're unwritten so if you're new to the sport then you know how are you gonna find out about these things so what I'm gonna do is pretty much just write them down and then you can choose to listen to them, you can choose to ignore it. I mean, riding is your own thing. You don't have to listen to me, you don't have to listen to anyone. Just go and do your own thing. But in my opinion, I think if you keep these things in mind, it'll make your riding look way better and generally give you much more just general satisfaction in your own riding. I'm not the best at explaining things, so hopefully you guys can understand some of the points I'm going to make. If not, just ask me in the, the comment section and uh, I'll try and clear things up a little bit. So I'm going to start with bitch cranks and basically a bitch crank is where you need to get the front wheel off the floor or do a hop and instead of relying on a bunny hop you just like, put a big crank on the pedals just to, to get the bike up and to me this is a real shame that people do this and I've seen a lot of videos of not just new riders but even experienced riders they will do bitch cranks and again with the next thing I'm gonna mention after this one it's just you know it's just a little bit cheating and it just to me it shows that you're not quite good enough to do like the, the full technique and just using the timing and body positioning to get a, a good hop out of something and I think the main thing people do it in is say manual 180s because to answer you, a manual 180 with an actual bunny hop in it is seriously hard to get the timing. You need to get your body weight in exactly the right position, you need to get the timing absolutely spot on to get that hop out of it. And I see so many people who will just ignore all of that and just, oh, I can have my body anywhere and just do that and they'll get around. And you know, why not just take the time to get the riding to be as good as you can be? It's like you're just taking a bit of a shortcut which actually isn't a shortcut at all because you're learning it like a, like a bit of a, a, an easy way and then in the future if you want to actually do it with a hop you kind of have to unlearn bad habits so I think to me it's really important to just try and get your riding to the best it can be I mean for me it's just a personal satisfaction I wouldn't be happy if I was doing riding which you know you see BMX's do like You see BMXs do all kinds of crazy stuff. They don't have brakes and some of them have free coasters so they can't get a crank on and they can do amazing, just absolute spot on technique. So if they can do it, you can do it. It just takes that little bit more dedication to get the practice down and just take it to the next level. And the thing is bitch cranks aren't just used in say manual 180s, they're also used, I see a lot of people, uh, this is more towards the people who are new to sport who will try and bunny hop up something and then at the last minute they'll just put a jab on the pedals and yeah I mean if you're new sometimes a bunny hop up something can be pretty tricky but just, I think it's pretty important that you don't teach yourself any bad habits and if you can even if it means you have to do lower stuff I'd always recommend trying to just avoid any type of bitch crank and I see people doing them in like bunny hop gaps where they'll go and bunny hop and then just do a, a crank at the end and yeah it's just uh, if you want to do stuff like as best you can I'd totally recommend just trying to iron out just any kind of bitch cranks where you can usually just do without one okay so that's kind of like the first unwritten rule bitch cranks the second one pretty much goes hand in hand with the first one in that most people who manual 180 with a, a bitch crank usually spin opposite so Obviously the next one I'm going to talk about is spinning opposite. Now the general rule is if you're right foot forward you spin to the left, if you're left foot forward you spin to the right. 
I don't really know why that is. It just usually seems the most comfortable. That's generally the way BMXs usually spin. And yeah, it just kind of works out. So say if you're doing a, a wall ride to 180, if you spin uh, the regular way, it kind of works out well that you can spin out of wall rides and stuff. And just generally, it makes everything link together if you can spin regular. The exception would be obviously if you do everything opposite, in which case, you know, that's absolutely fine. Um, you're probably most comfortable with that and everything links up. So if you're finding that is the case, then yep, no problem. Spin opposite all you want. Now, the issue is if you're coming from a trials background, trials teaches some really bad habits. And I know firsthand because I picked up pretty much all of them. And I used to spin opposite myself and I just found it messed up my riding so much. Uh, I used to bunny hop and I used to tuck the trials ride away on the right hand side of the bike with right foot forward and when I was doing bunny hops that meant that I twisted opposite but this meant that I couldn't do wall ride to 180s, I couldn't do just high 180 hops and it's, I wasn't too happy with it. So what I did was I just said to myself that I was going to learn to spin the other way and it was hard work. It took me about six months of being rubbish, my bunny hops went really low and you know it, it was a bit um, not depressing but you never want your riding to go bad uh, but I think it's paid off. Now everything links up, my tie taps spin the correct way, my wall ride 180s spin the correct way, my manual 180s spin the correct way, and I can bunny hop 180 higher than I've ever done. My bunny hops are back to as high as they've ever been. So, you know, if you are finding yourself in a muddle with which way you spin, I seriously recommend taking the time to try and get everything going the same way. And that even means to, if you're going to be rubbish for a little bit, then be rubbish for a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. I think you just need to look at the bigger picture and a lot of people just kind of want a quick fix. They want to get, you know, doing the big tricks and stuff before they've really realized what they're doing. And if you actually want your riding to be as good for as long as possible, take the time to get things right from the start. I think the whole trials teaching bad habits is because when you're doing a bitch crank, it's easier to spin in the direction that you're putting the power down, which this is why everything goes hand in hand with bitch cranks and opposite spins, just because it's easier to spin opposite with a bitch crank than it is, I think, from a bunny hop, unless you spend some time getting used to it. And again, like the bitch cranks, I see some really, really good riders out there uh, who all spin like goofy, as it's called. And this is just because they've done their trials background and they've got these bad habits. They'll probably say it's not a bad habit. And you know, if you're happy with what you're doing, then fine. Again, don't let me say otherwise. This is just my personal opinion. But again, it's like, why not make your riding link up as much as possible? I've just gone and done a manual 180, sort of the regular way with outer bitch crank and I've gone and done a opposite or goofy uh, spin with a bitch crank one as well. You can see here the regular way is it's hard. It is really hard. You've got to get the timing right and yeah, you can see how many times this takes. This is just on an easy curb. Imagine what it's like trying this in a natural line on a higher wall or something, you know, it is hard. And it can get frustrating at times when I'm out filming and I'll spend hours and hours just trying to get the perfect technique and then you'll see someone come along who just will bitch crank and you know just go and do it pretty much first time and it's like really and I guess it is just down to personal opinion and perhaps I'm being too strict I'm sure a lot of you watching this will probably say yeah Ali shush yeah, yeah, yeah being too strict here but then again I think some people like to play computer games with cheat codes and some people like to play games with the hard setting on so yeah just different tastes i guess now, i probably shoot myself in the foot a little bit with a few things in that i don't do some things just because you know it might break some of my personal rules like these bitch cranks and opposite spins so i really struggle with 180 gap hops you know danny's really really good at those but 
you know, he does the trials right away, spinning uh, to the like, goofy side. And, you know, I can 180 my regular way, but because you're going away from your power foot, it's actually quite tricky. Um, so, yeah, perhaps I'm a little bit too strict with myself. Perhaps, you know, I should accept that some rules can be broken. Um, but for now, I just, yeah, I think just to get my riding the way I want it, I'm going to try and keep on going like the hard way. And if I get it in the end, then I think it'll be worth it. So in summary, the two main unwritten rules uh, are the bitch crank and the opposite spins, which are kind of like intertwined with each other. And if you can fix one, you may as well fix the other one. Um, there are other unwritten rules, just like etiquette stuff. You know, if you're out on a group ride and you know, you're trying a line, wait your turn. Uh, don't go and ride in front of people, uh, stuff like that. Um, be polite to people, you know, sometimes you get kicked off places and, you know, you can either cause an argument, be cheeky, or you can just be polite, give trials a good name, and if you are friendly to them, they'll probably be friendly back and they won't kick up a fuss if you go and ride there again. So, yeah, it's just general, just don't be an arse, basically. Okay, so the next one I'm going to talk about is just general quality control. This is just in riding and in videos. I know this is ironic coming from me with these vlogs, which are, you know, horrendous quality control going on these. I see these really good riders put out these videos and I'm just like, why have you put that line in there? And it's just really odd. It's like, just because you film something doesn't mean you have to use it, you know? I, obviously you want to go out and film all your best stuff. And if you are happy with something, then fair enough. But, you know, one example would be, uh, if you've done, you know, a really, really amazing trick, it's really hard, it's got that wow factor, you know, end it at that. A single clip is fine. Don't do what I've seen other people do is where they will do this amazing banger trick and then just go and sprint off somewhere and do like a little smaller trick on something. That is the last thing you want to do. You always want your banger trick to be like the lasting impression. And that just generally goes for the whole video as well. You, just because you film something in order doesn't mean you need to put it in a video in order. But whenever I do like a, a bigger, more professional quality video, especially with Mark, and Mark's really strict on this as well. And it's basically, yeah, just you want maybe something at the beginning of the video to grab people's attention and just build up towards the end of the video. You want to save your best stuff for the last. And this works with song choice as well. You don't want a song but just go straight in there. You kind of want a song which builds up with the riding as well. And a lot of people get this so, so wrong. They'll just put like horrendous music on that doesn't go anywhere. They'll put bangers at the start and then the rest of the video will just be like meh. And you know, it's just really simple things. And sometimes you see riders who will be doing a simple line and you know, they'll make a mistake or they'll do loads of hops and you know if it's a line that you think you can repeat then just go and do it again it's like even if it takes like quite a few goes it's worth doing just to make it look good you know i'm quite strict with myself when i'm out riding for videos that i really really don't like to do correction hops because in my mind you know the clues in the name it's a correction hop what you're correcting you're correcting a mistake so the fewer hops you do it means the fewer mistakes have been made and whenever I'm filming a video, I'll normally, you know, try and figure out how many hops is the maximum I can get away with. And the fewer the better. So say it's a, a line and I think I can do it in three hops or less, you know, that's my limit. If I'm halfway through the line and do a, an extra hop, I do four hops, that's it, I'll start again. You know, even if the riding's gone okay, you know, I'll just start again. The only exception would be, say, if I'm away on holiday or you know, I'm not ever going to get a chance to ride something again. That is the only time, you know, it's acceptable to put something lesser quality in because it's either that or nothing at all. But if you are able to ride something again and there's no limit, you know, just keep going, keep going. Uh, sometimes it will take me hours and hours and hours just to do what would be like a relatively simple line to other people. And, you know, it's this whole quality control side of things that it's the same with the bitch cranks and manual 180s. It's, you want your riding to look the best it can possibly be. And, you know, sure you might make correction hops, but if you make loads, it's just gonna look a bit 
rubbish rather than if you just did it like smooth and with fewer hops. Okay, so the next thing, um, I guess it's kind of all linked up again. Um, it goes with the quality control and it goes with the next subject I'm going to talk about in a second. I get a lot of requests on how to do things and there is nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's admirable that you want to learn how to do stuff. So that's brilliant. Keep on asking, keep on asking. The only issue is people ask me how to do quite advanced stuff. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's good to have the ambition. But what I say to these people is, you know, can you do the basics? So, for example, I got asked to do G-turns by quite a few people. And I consider a G-turn, you know, quite an advanced trick. And, you know, these people are trying these G-turns. And the first thing I ask is, you know, can you endo really steep? Can you do front hops? Because, you know, if you can't do a controlled really steep endo, even to the point of going over the handlebars on purpose, or if you can't find that balance point on the front wheel for front hops, then you're not going to be able to do a G-turn. Certainly not a good looking one. So my next point is don't try to run before you can walk. What you don't see with all these videos uh, with myself, Duncan, Danny and so on is we've been riding for decades. We didn't just jump in and start doing G-turns. We've spent years and years and years doing really you know, boring stuff like track standing and endos and just back hops. And I see a lot of people who have been brought up on the Danny generation, which we call them who they see you know all these tire taps foot jam whips and you know they just want to go out and do that because it's really cool and it is really cool and what they don't realize is there's so much groundwork that's been done before that uh, and I'll see a lot of you know pretty decent riders out there who will be able to do like the longest fake you nose manuals they're able to do double or triple foot jam whips they're able to g-turn but they can barely back hop and Put them on anything other than flat surfaces and they really like come undone so this is where i always say you know don't try and take a shortcut by going straight into the, the impressive stuff because actually in the long run it's not really a shortcut at all because you're going to have to learn the basics at some point and you know if you have learned to run before you can walk you're usually going to get a bit of a sketchy style because if you're doing quite advanced stuff but without the basic balance it's not going to look as good as if you've got really good bike control and then going into it. So yeah, by all means, keep on asking how to do stuff, but you know, really, really spend the time to get the basics dialed, get your balance as good as possible, ride as many rocks as you can, logs, streets, skate parks, just get your balance as good as you can and get to learn how your balance point on your front wheel is, how your balance point on your back wheel is, and you'll be amazed at how much that will help just everything else. I mentioned style in that last bit, so my next point is style. And I get asked, you know, how do you get a good style? And that is a really tricky question. Um, people ask all the time, you know, what comes first, you know, style or control? And personally, I think, you know, you want to get control on the bike first. Don't worry about getting a style, you know, style comes once you get control and get good on the bike. So to go back to my previous point about spending time to get the basic style, that will help get you a good style more than anything else, just getting as comfortable on the bike as possible. So like I mentioned, people going straight into the hard tricks, trying to run before they can walk, that's a pretty good way to give yourself a bad style. You know, just you'll end up being quite rigid, you don't know where the balance point is, so you'll have a lot of body movement going on. So people have said in comments and stuff that they quite like my style and that I think has come down from experience and just not fighting the bike. I let the bike kind of do its thing. If it wants to move a little bit, you know, just let it. As long as you're in control of the bike, then you're generally going to look like better on the bike for it. And this is where it kind of wraps up everything I've talked about in a nice little package. The whole bitch cranks, the whole goofy spinning, the quality control, the, what was the other one? The running before you can walk, uh, all, all adds towards getting a good style. So there are a few pointers which I think I can tell you which will help you achieve what some people think is a nice style. I mean, style is a personal opinion. Some people think uh, one person will have a good style and uh, they'll think someone else has a bad style and vice versa. Uh, so, you know, it's all relative. You know, some people think I've got a horrible style and that's fine, that's absolutely fine. Um, 
but if you think I've got a good style, then my tips are try to be as smooth on the bike as possible. I mean, our bikes don't have suspension, but we do have like two foot of arm movement and leg movement, especially. And if you want to look smooth, when you land something, don't just stay rigid. And you know, some people do that, then they'll, oh, they'll get like a, a whole head bobble thing going on. Uh, geez, no, be fluid, move your legs, let the bike like, come up to the side of you if it's like, a big drop. Uh, that really, really helps, I think, get an, a really nice style. The other thing is, uh, mentioned previously, is the lack of correction hops. Because uh, like I said, a correction hop is correcting mistakes. So the fewer mistakes you do, the smoother your riding looks. So for example, getting over this rail, um, this way I'm doing it with quite a few hops. I'm a little bit rigid and yeah, it just doesn't look as good as doing it with fewer hops and trying to be a bit more fluid. And the fluidity side of things, that's a, a good one as well. I think some people tend to use their brakes a little bit too much, especially in manuals, you know. The ideal is you want to get that balance point perfect so you don't even need to use your brakes. Um, you know, sometimes maybe you have to, some lines will dictate that you need to slow down. So if you have to use your brakes, that's fine. But again, I see a lot of people, it goes back to the quality control side of things, that they'll just drag their brakes and they'll be quite jerky on the back wheel. And, you know, if it's just a manual, you know, why not just go back and try it again without the back brake? So, yeah, I think the less you can use your brakes, or at least if you do use your brakes, try not to use them so harsh that you end up being all jerky and uh, the bike's reacting funny. So, you know, just go with the flow, let the bike do its thing a little bit. But you always kind of want to be in control a bit at the same time. The other thing with style is um, I see a lot of people you know, new riders, even older experienced riders who, you know, they've tried to copy someone else's style. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with being influenced by another rider. Uh, I know I'm, I'm definitely influenced by a lot of people, um, but I think it's really vital that you, you know, just take influence, don't try and copy. And you will get your own style, like everyone is different and as long as you go out and ride how you want to ride and ride what's fun you know you'll get your own style and hopefully it will end up like a quite a nice style uh, i just find sometimes if you try and copy someone else's style it ends up being forced and usually not as good as the person you're trying to copy as well so yeah just don't fret about style just ride your bike have fun uh, if you want to take my pointers on board uh, that's that's great. Hopefully that will help you uh, But by all means choose to ignore them go and do your own thing as well uh, I'm just you know a 32 year old guy just bickering on about how to ride a bike. So, you know, it's in the Scheme of things. It's not really that important. Just go out and have fun and You will get your own style and hopefully it'll be a really good one The other absolutely vital thing to do to get a, a good style is to wear the skinniest jeans you can uh, quite a skinny t-shirt and a BMX piss pot lid. Now, if you get these things, it's absolutely uh, guaranteed your style points will go up. Oh, and another thing before I forget, uh, it's kind of not really an unwritten rule. Um, it's more of a quality control. It's more of a, a personal quality control of myself is uh, rail lines. Now, I know some people have picked up on this, which makes me happy. Whenever I try and ride a balance line, I always, always try and keep my feet on the pedals. I see some riders who will be hanging their legs out to the side or dangling their foot down to lower the center of gravity. And you know, that does help your balance. Uh, but it just goes back to everything, you know. It, why try and make something easier? Why not just try and do it the best way and the best looking way that you can do it? And to me, just riding with your feet on the pedals just looks way, way better than having a foot dangling off. It kind of looks like a dog taking a piss if you're Got your foot all off to the side so yeah i think to me that's quite an important one so yeah i just wanted to let everyone know about that okay so i'm gonna leave it as that there's probably some bits i've missed as usual um now i'm actually really interested to hear your opinions on anything i've said you know there some things are possibly a little bit controversial um there's definitely people who you know won't share my opinions on things so yeah What's your thoughts on things? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Is there anything I've missed? Um, and any questions as well, you know, put stuff in the comments and I'll try my best to answer any questions you guys have. 
and if you have any you know requests uh, for future videos or anything you want me to talk about then yeah just say and I will try my best to do that but yeah for now I'm gonna head home it's a little bit rainy today and get this edited I guess so uh, I hope you guys have a good week um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel go on my Instagram go on my Facebook hands yeah, you know and yeah I guess I will see you guys next week hopefully cool have a good one